So it's just going to be me, not Natasha. Natasha's going to speak at the next go-round. Um, I'm a partner in the Toronto office, and, and like LP, um, I provide services in both official languages for construction. That means English and profanity. Um, <laughs> a, a, few, a few notes about the... Uh, the new act, it's, um, some of you have heard this before, Neil is lean spelled backwards, so they, they're, they've taken me out of the act. The, the new act is going to be called the Construction Act, no longer the Construction Lean Act. Um, the other thing to note, and we've talked about this um, a little bit, about the, the act coming into enforce, the, the end of the statute says that when the act is proclaimed by the um, uh, Lieutenant Governor, that the what I'll call the administrative, the simple things, which Natasha and I have the obligation to speak about, will come into play immediately, um, into force immediately. When the um, uh, harder things, like subject to schedules, the um, uh, nominating authority, all those regulations, they have to be yet to be drafted. So we haven't seen the regulations, we haven't seen some of the prescribed forms, and they won't come into force until passed by the Lieutenant Governor and Council, i.e. the Cabinet, which means that this Act could come into force uh, with respect to the simple amendments, the more complicated ones could be on the next government's watch and query whether they're going to rush it through or not. There are some statutes I've seen in other, in other uh, circumstances where the Act gets passed in 2002 in one case and the regs weren't put into place until 2010. So the adjudication piece is one that's still going to play out a little bit, but it, it's coming in some form in any event, and it will be on the books. It's just the, the regulations are still yet to be drafted. Um, my, my presentation, I don't, I don't have slides, um, just the, the placeholder, because some of the issues I'm going to talk about are just basic things within the Act. And the first one is, um, and by the way, we have these little cards that we've passed out uh, on your chair, uh, and they have the relevant sections of the Act, the new Act, um, in brackets after them, and you can find that. And I'm not sure if our hub has the um, consolidated statute on it. If it doesn't, it should, and we will add it to it. We have Bill 142. We've also done a, a black line against the, uh, the um, Construction Lean Act for now, anyway. Um, so you can see wh where the changes are and come into place. And as LP, as a litigator, pointed out, litigators go and look at the exact precise language um, and the words specifically to see what they say, you know, what is entered into, et cetera. So um, a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about, Natasha, are precise wording of the statute. And the first thing just uh, is the lien, the lien itself. Um, the um, uh, Construction Lien Act had always not, you know, 45 days in which to preserve your lien, 90 days from the date of last supplier, as the Act's actually worded, 45 days from the last day in which you could have preserved a lien. Um, to, to start your lawsuit. The new changes are this. You have to lean or your lien rights expire 60 days after your date of last supply. The holdback is still running on a 45-day schedule. So that's a big change. Before you had that, um, I don't know if it's culturally appropriate to say the Mexican standoff where you had holdback and lien rights expiring on the same day. Now what they've done is they've given a breather. So the holdback period is still going to be 45 days from last supply or substantial completion, but your lien rights are going to run for an additional uh, period of time, so it's 60 days to lien uh, under the new Act, and it'll be 90 days from those 60 days that you perfect your lien um, by starting a lawsuit. So it's a longer time for negotiation and discussion, et cetera. You no longer be forced to these very, very quick uh, timelines. The second thing about liens um, is that they have uh, expanded the definition of what would constitute an improvement for the purpose of a lien, and they've allowed, as Ted mentioned earlier, for uh, the concept of what's called capital repairs uh, in, the, in the Act, and they've distinguished that from uh, maintenance. So anything essentially that preserves the length uh, of the project is a capital improvement, and that is subject to uh, a lien right at this point in time. If you're just pr doing preventative maintenance, that would not be an improvement that would be uh, subject to, to a lien. So that's, again, another, uh, another important distinction when it comes to, to liens. 
Um, moving along, because we've got a lot to cover today, and as I say, a lot of the stuff that I have is, is really just simple stuff in the, in the Act. Um, holdbacks. So the, the big uh, debate has always been that the owner has this holdback and they, should they maintain it in cash or not. So the new Act allows for holdbacks to be maintained in a form other than cash. So you can have a letter of credit, you can have a holdback bond, etc. The second thing is, is there was always a discussion about what's the, why won't you release the minimum holdback? I know you claim that they're extra to the contracts, etc. And um, so the new Act has a mandatory provision that the minimum holdback amount must be released. It, it's a shall, shall be released um, when the 45-day period expires uh, from the date of publication. So you can no longer sit on the holdback. However, the owner can publish a notice in a prescribed form, which is yet to be drafted, um, as long as they do it within, within 40 days, uh, when the holdback was, was um, uh, when the clock started, they published a notice saying, we're not going to, we're going to set off against the holdback for various reasons. So there's some um, notice to the world that holdback isn't going to be coming and you might want to get your lien rights going, et cetera. So there's, there's that new regime. The, there, the act also provides for, and this is a may, not a shall, for early release of holdback on an annual basis or if you've got a project that has certain milestones, you may now release holdback on that basis as well. So no longer will you have to wait until the very end, till substantial completion, and then holdback gets released. You can now have a, a, an option where holdback can be released earlier, so it frees up uh, cash to the earlier subtrades uh, and contractors uh, in the project. So those are the, the, the big uh, uh, changes uh, surrounding holdback. And they're found in section 17 to 25 of the, um, of the Act. The last thing I'm going to talk about um, is uh, the new rules around trusts. Um, so section 8 of the Act um, deals with the contractor's trust. And um, the Act is being amended to provide, and, and this was important, there's no longer going to be specific project um, uh, bank accounts that are required for trust, but the new act says that every person who's a trustee shall comply with the following requirements. Trust funds shall be deposited into a bank account in the trustee's name, and if there's more than one trustee, the fund shall be deposited in a bank account in all of the trustee's names. So you, you don't have to have a project-specific bank account, but you now have to deposit trust funds into a specific account that's marked as a trust account. And you have to keep records. So even if it's not a project-specific bank account, you have to keep records of the f funds in and out per project within that bank account. And that's the new mandatory regime regarding uh, application of trust funds uh, for a project. And that applies to the owner, sorry, to the contractor, subcontractor's duties, the Section 8 uh, trust under the Act. Um, and, and that, again, will assist parties in identifying where the flow of funds are for the purposes of making trust claims. Natasha is going to speak to the, the amendments around uh, trust claims and lien claims being uh, no longer having to be separate. But again, this just sort of modernizes uh, the act in those, in those three areas. Okay, I think that's it. So over to Natasha. Thank you very much.